another video, another project. Today, guys, I'm excited to show you this house that is behind me, that is being built using precast concrete wall panels. We are at Ngong in Kajiado County, and this house is a four bedroom bungalow. We're going to start exploring this house from where we are at today because it's my first time visiting the project and uh, we'll be joined in by the contractor in charge, uh, Mr. Chomba, who will take us through the project and help us understand it all together. So enjoy yourself as we explore this house. Okay, welcome yes. back to the channel and the community. Thank you. Uh, we are at your project today and kindly introduce the project to us. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you for the good work that you're doing. Yes. I always receive calls and uh, messages, inboxes about yeah. uh, the, the, the channel yes. and how informative it is. So that's a very good work. We are at Ngong, yes. uh, Kajiado County. Yeah. We are doing a very massive uh, four bedroom house. Yeah, uh, it actually, it's, it's very massive. Yeah, it's going to be a, a three, three bedrooms are going to be in suit. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a huge house. So it's, uh, it's almost 200 and 245 uh, SQM. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's three bedroom plus one extra bedroom. So, so yeah. is it a four bedroom bungalow? It's, it's a four bedroom bungalow. Okay. Yeah, it's a four bedroom bungalow. Uh, with three bedrooms on suit? Yeah, yeah. All uh, three bedrooms are on suit. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah. So I can see uh, in the background they're doing the panels. Yes. So did the client know about the panels beforehand? Or how did the client know about precast panels? Uh, fortunately, uh, client knew the the panel, or rather this technology. He didn't have, but uh, he didn't have the idea. Though he had uh, seen it maybe on social media, you know, on another platform. Yeah. But uh, he didn't know more about the panels. Yes. Until now, he got into your channel, the yeah. Property Noma channel. Okay. And oh, he so got, yeah. I didn't know he's a subscriber. Yeah, he's a subscriber. <laughs> I think now. Yes. Because yes. uh, he watched all of our. Our, our, you know, our, our, our clips there, yes. our, most of our videos. And uh, he came to a conclusion that uh, we are one of the best uh, panels installer, of which we are. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now that's, that's where now he engaged us. Yes. Uh, based now on the technology, uh, he, he started having a, you know, a, a very uh, a conversation, yeah, very tight conversation about the technology, I took him to some of the projects that we have done, and uh, like the Juja one, which is almost yeah. to a completion. Yeah. And uh, you promised your viewers about yes, the uh, co a complete definitely project. Definitely going there. And maybe in the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so he came. He visited some of the sites that uh, we've done. Yeah. And now, we started now uh, uh, featuring more on his project. We looked at the drawing. Yeah. Some of the changes I I gave him some of uh, advantages of using the precast panel, like the dimension. Yeah. We need to have the even dimensions yeah. so that now we don't have the wastage of the panels. Yeah. So those are the th intricacies that uh, I started. Uh, you know, I informed him. Okay. More more so the advantages of the of the panels. Yeah. You see, like now we we are on a very uh, lean season, so uh, we are going to take a very short time. Uh, doing the the wall of the house. Yeah, how short are we talking about? Uh, we are hoping to finish this project according to our timeline and also yeah. our work schedule. We are uh, we are supposed to hand over this project uh, by the end of May. By the end of May. Yeah, by the and end of May. Right now we are almost the end of yeah, March. Yeah, towards the end of yeah towards okay, the end so of that's, March. So that's very fast. Yes, yeah, ah. I think it is very fast. Yeah. Even though now towards the end of the May, that's a that's a. You know that's a big timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So we needed we needed that time because of the change of weather. Okay. Yes. And how long do you think it will take to finish putting up the panels for the entire house? Okay. This is the second day. We started ah, yesterday. Okay. What has already been done is just one day. Just one day. I oh, may say it's yeah. just one day because yesterday yeah. Yeah. we were removing the channels. I think also we are going. Uh, yeah, we're going, we, to, talk we about are going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, this is the second day. Ah. Yeah, and uh, you you can see we are almost done with the master master area study room, uh -huh. almost half of it. Okay. So we are talking of two more days uh, to complete uh, the the installation of the wall panels. Yeah. Yes. 
this is actually a very uh, this is a massive house yeah when you this stand is, here you feel this very is, small this is massive you can see the yeah <laughs> the foundation is yeah ex, this is, is massive is, is, is and also the expansive. foundation yeah uh, mm -hmm. we were on a very hilly you know the slope the gradient yeah was too it's, tough. it's sloping yeah. towards uh, yeah so way. what we did we we did the cut and fill uh, we cut this this part yeah we fill on the lower side okay yeah so but now we cannot incur more on the on the you know on the materials the backfilling and everything yeah initially uh, the client could have gone the the you know the elevating the slab yeah yeah because of the backfill but now because we we had the backfill already yeah so there was no point of now doing the suspended slab ah. since now we could use what we are cutting to fill where we don't have okay yes ah. i can see there are some grooves that are, that have been dug yes at the foundation yes kindly explain to us what, what they are uh, now according to your channel uh, i always uh, go through the comments and uh, i came across two or three clients or maybe four yeah that asked the same question they wanted to to know what is the attachment between the foundation and the wall yes bearing in mind even on the bricks yeah uh, the the if you are doing the convection away you have this the slab and then now you have the brick yeah no it is even worse because even the brick will not have an attachment a direct attachment with the slab okay. because there is a dpc that yes. is done first yeah. and then now the 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 bricks yeah you know the work of the dpc is to prevent uh, uh, the seepage uh, of yeah, water seepage of water yeah now uh because since there was that question and unfortunately this client also yeah uh, raised that question mm -hmm. and uh that's when we started discussing. Yeah. Uh, I told I told him of uh, maybe something that we can do so mm -hmm. that now he can be settled in his mind and also in his, you know his yeah, desire yeah, that yeah. Uh, there, there's, the, a, there's, there's a farm, there's a farm sustainability yeah. of the panel and the slab. Yeah. So I told him of what maybe we can do. We discussed and uh, he was also on to an idea because even uh, he he mentioned something. Okay. Actually, he mentioned before I could I could mention on it. Yeah. So I because of now the experience and knowledge in construction yeah. so i told him what we can do uh, now we started fitting the channels we did the channel so if you can yeah. if you can come here yeah we did so, the channel so this space is yeah this is the trench yeah this is the size of the channel oh okay the size of the channel yeah. is also the size of the panel uh, so what we did uh, we took our drawing yeah we 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 fitted the channel first yes. even before we cut we we were we were casting the slab before mm -hmm. we cast the slab uh into a depth of about uh 50 50 millimeters yeah, yeah so the top of the slab yeah it's also the it flashes with the top of the channel ah. and then now we we started casting yeah so uh beneath the channel yeah there's also a cast yeah you, you know there's a brc and uh, there's also some concrete yeah that's what now we did to retain that groove yeah and then after three days now we started removing the, the channel, channel. Uh, when because we remove, the yeah. same channels are, are the ones that the are same going channels to be used are the ones that the are going to be used actually yeah. there's no damage on that yeah so uh when when we did that yeah now we formed that groove so uh our panel now is now not fitting on that groove i think uh, there's some advantage of it because uh, -huh. uh there is now a, a very firm connection between yeah. the panel and the and the and the foundation and the, slab, and the foundation yeah because it's almost two inch yes. so it is seated firmly on two inch yeah. and it is held on both on, on, on both, both sides. sides yeah even though we are going to do the screening for the, the for floor. the for the floor floor screening not for the tiles yeah it will still have that that firm attachment okay. yeah okay. Okay. so i think uh, it's a very good idea yeah and i i, I believe uh, once you share this yes this it's true because i always get such yeah, questions it's going to answer most of the clients questions yeah yeah, yeah. and sure. we, we, are, we 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 actually are now working on it yeah because uh we uh on our you know on our on our group uh -huh. or rather on our team yeah yeah some of this discussion now we, we are going to take it more further so that now we can be yeah. able to yeah. to see what we can do Yes. Uh huh. You said it's two hundred and forty-five. Yeah, around two hundred and two hundred and forty-seven. Two hundred and forty-seven square meters. Yes. How many panels uh, are those? Uh, it's two hundred and forty-one. Oh, two hundred and forty-one. Two hundred and forty-one. Uh -huh. We have large windows. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the most of the walls, yeah. uh, external walls, are, yeah. 
has openings. When you're doing the quotation for the panels, yes. do you exclude the window and the, and the doors in that quotation? Yes, actually, what happens, yeah. a, a drawing, you know, you know uh, a, a working drawing, because there's sketch and there's working drawing. Yeah. A working drawing has the windows and door schedules yeah. that shows the dimensions of the windows, the dimensions of the doors. Yeah. So what happens when we are doing our BOQ, maybe our quotation, we are able to separate the walls uh -huh. and, the, and the size of the windows or other size of the doors. Oh. Yeah. So in this uh, 200 and... What number? 247. 247 panels. Yes. Uh, you've excluded the yeah the, 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 the windows, the windows and, the and the doors. Uh, yeah, and, and all the all the openings. And how much are we talking about the 247 panels? Uh, in terms of cost. Yes, in terms of cost. Uh, it's around 500 or rather 530. 530. Yeah, because uh, each panel is 2,300. Okay. Yeah. And since you are since you are a contractor. Is that affordable when compared to stone? Yeah, it is affordable. Uh -huh. And uh, it is affordable in this way. Uh, there's a minimum uh, labor that is required. Yeah. And uh, you take a uh, very short time to, to do the, the walling. Okay. So, uh, thirdly, the panel is almost 90% complete. Yeah. It's plastered. Yes. Unlike now the bricks, you have to build to, to lay the bricks. And then, and then you now you steal the plastering you on plaster. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think those are the advantages that makes it even more affordable. Yeah, yeah. leave alone even the, the aesthetic uh, look, yeah. but no affordability. This foundation height is very high. Yes. What influenced uh, you to make this foundation this high? Okay, now, you know a foundation has to be level, despite of the slopeness, uh -huh. despite of the hill, despite even if the land is too flat. Yeah. A foundation has to have one level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like maybe sometimes a, a client would want the, you know, the step house, the step foundation. But in this instance, the client wanted a, a very uh, level, level foundation. foundation. Okay. So what we did, because it was sloppy, we excavated this size, this side. Yeah. And also we excavated the other side. Yeah. The other side was a little bit uh, too rocky yeah. on this side because even this hip, this this cotton heat came from this side yeah so what we did after the excavation this was too low yeah. than the other side so we had to build uh, a foundation or uh, more courses here yeah. than the other side yeah so now we can achieve the the level, the level of, of, the of the foundation, foundation. Uh, and that's what now brought this side to be more than seven no, no uh, seven courses yeah and the other side is around three courses, three courses. yeah ah, i know okay. some sometimes people will ask or maybe yeah. people comment yeah. is that a structural defect yeah yeah it is not a structural defect yeah because we are trying to find the stable ground here and uh -huh. the stable ground on the other side yeah so even if we have uh, seven courses here mm -hmm. and we have three courses here that's not a structural defect Ah. So long as it is seated on a very stable ground, ground. even if you had one course here and yeah. six course there, okay. that is still okay. And you mentioned that the soil is black cotton soil. Yes. How did you ensure stability of the foundation in such kind of soil? Okay, actually this is almost a mixture of uh, cotton and uh, mm -hmm. some maybe other soil, yeah. which is not viable uh, yeah. when, when it comes to construction. construction. So what we did, we ensured that we have excavated all the cotton soil yeah and we are we are we are now left with uh with maram yeah maram at least uh that is stable you can also use it at, as a backfill yeah yeah so we ensured that we have excavated every area that had uh, the black, bl cotton, black soil. cotton soil how deep did you have to go uh on this side actually we have not we, we uh this, this this is the second course uh-huh yeah so we have one more course down yeah yeah so that and now we can get to the to the to the maram. Okay. Yeah. And at the front. On the on the front we have four courses. Ah. Yeah. So that yeah. now we can get to the rocky. There the 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 front side. Yeah. It's too rocky. Yeah. In fact, the, that kind of rock, it's you know those big big rocks. Yeah. It, yeah. Those boulders. Yes. They are they are difficult to. Yeah. They are difficult around. even to carry. Yeah. So those are the ones that we experience on that side. Yeah. So that that uh, uh, gave us that. Uh, uh confidence okay now we are putting our foundation on a very stable uh, ground yeah yes um how long did you take to set up the foundation of this massive house uh it took three weeks yeah 
but uh, it's because of weather. Yeah, you know, it is, we were, it's we were, the rainy and season. Also, we are on the rainy season. Yeah. And uh, having those, uh, you know, earth movers coming to the site, yeah. uh, it wasn't that easy. So we were a little bit disrupted so because there was of, a bit right? of there, were, yeah. there were challenges that you yes, faced. Yes, but we anticipated to uh, to take like two weeks. Okay, though we took okay. three weeks. Uh, yes. Did uh, this type of soil influence the duration? Or uh, normally... When you compare black cotton soil versus yes. the normal kinds of soil like red soil, yes, does it take longer to build the foundation? Okay, it doesn't take longer yeah. because what will take long, it is the process of excavation. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if it is rainy, excavation becomes very difficult. difficult. In fact, when you are dealing with cotton, yeah, when you are dealing with the red soil, yeah. it's a little bit manageable. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes manageable. Okay. But when you are dealing with cotton, uh, it's 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 difficult. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Looking at the the panels, what's the height uh, that the client wanted? wanted? This is two point seven, uh, which is normally uh, the standard. Yeah. When it comes to doing uh, most of the projects. Okay. Yeah, because uh, uh, for the bungalow, yeah, two point seven is standard. You can also use it uh, when you're doing the mansion it because yeah. now we are going to have a some ad additional dimensions mm -hmm. on the beam. But yeah. since now we don't have the beam, 0.7 is it's still okay. Standard. Yeah. And uh, the windows are huge. Yeah, the clients, that's, that's the client wanted. That's wanted, client's uh, preference. Uh, that's what uh, she wanted. Yeah. In fact, the lady now, she wanted uh, big windows. Okay. Which I think... Uh, it's okay. It's, it's lit, very lit in uh, natural valuable. light. Yeah, natural light and yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're on your own. Compound. compound yeah. Yes. This is a huge compound. It's yes. Like an acre. It's, it's almost an acre. Ah. Yes. We're expecting that uh, we can finish the walling by Friday. Ah. So that now we can. Also, we are doing the light gauge still. On, yeah. On I'll roofing. make sure to, yeah. to come. Yeah. It's every very step important this, to come and because see. Because uh, also uh, people challenge me to come to sites and yeah and see document and, and, yeah. the step exactly, by step yeah. process. Yeah. yeah. On the ongoing process. Yes. It's yes. very very important. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be here uh, when they're doing the light gauge. Yeah, we will start on Monday. Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, since you're on that topic, yes, did the client prefer light gauge steel uh, versus timber? Okay, I introduced to him yeah. uh, on light gauge. Yeah. Uh, he didn't know about the light gauge. Yeah. And uh, we went to some of the sites that uh, we have done with light gauge. Yeah. And uh, I, I could tell him the advantages of the light gauge. Yeah. In fact, uh, Paramount is affordability. Yeah. You can't compare light gauge with uh, with, uh, with timber. Timber, timber has uh, escalated to a you know to a to a very yeah, huge margin. Yeah. And of course, uh, when you're using the light gauge, yeah. they are very minimal. In fact, there's there's no wastage because uh, most of the trusses yeah. they are pre-engineered at the factory. Yeah. So when they come here, they are just assembled. Yeah. And now mounted on the on the on top of the on the wall. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll make sure to be here in yes. that time so that yeah. I document yes, the entire starting process. Starting on Tuesday, I think uh, I will, shall be uh, mount, uh, fabricating them on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, combining the trusses. So, so. Yes. Uh, welcome back, uh, Mr. Chomba. Thank you. Now I can see the client uh, decided to use uh, LGS yes. light gauge steel. Yes. So for the viewers who don't know what light gauge steel is. Can you introduce uh, this material to them? Oh, thank you. Now, uh, this is a uh, light gauge steel, as you can see. It is steel, yeah. but uh, also a combination of uh, zinc and uh, alloy. And uh -huh. that's why it is called a uh, light gauge. As the name suggests, someone might thought, uh, is it light that uh, it cannot bear the weight of, uh, of a roof? Yeah. But uh, light is still the name. It's just a name. Yeah. But uh, it is steel. Uh -huh. It is very strong. Uh, Actually, I, remember, I think it's light because it's it's light to carry. If you yeah, compare this to, carry, to yeah. like a timber, yes, to a timber prop of the same, yes. this is lighter than that. Yeah, so I think that it, that's where it gets its name. Yeah, but also uh -huh. you cannot compare the the strength of a steel uh, with timber. Yeah. So the reason as to why, basically, uh, we we because uh, the client told us uh, yeah. he saw one of our posts. We did the f the some of the projects that we did uh, way back. Uh, I think it was 2018, 2019. Yes. So he saw and uh, he inquired more information about it. Yeah. 
And uh, there's, a, there's a very big advantage of using light gauge steel yes. over timber. timber. Yeah. yeah. So and what are those uh, advantages? <clears throat> One advantage of it, you can see there are so many pieces. Yes. These are not cut off. Yeah. These are specification pieces that are going to be assembled. Ah. This truss, mm -hmm. it is pre-engineered at the factory. Okay. Yeah, we furnish the the, the factory with the with the drawing. They come up with the with the frame of the trusses. Ah. So every truss has its own bundle. It, yeah. it came with bundles. Yeah. So meaning every Every steel, every piece, even this one that I'm holding this, it's, uh, it's, it's part, going, of, it's part of somewhere. It's, yeah. it's going to fit somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, the advantage of it is that, uh, you know, as like timber, you can't get the specific measurement you want. Yeah. Maybe you'd want like uh, two meters, but the one that they are selling, they can't cut the two meters and then they are left with one meter. Yeah. So you have to carry the whole, the whole of it. Mm -hmm. So coming to site, the amount of timbers that uh, will be left as yeah, cut off, as waste. there are so many. Yeah. And I uh, you know they are also accounted, they the, are also part of the, the, of bill. the bill. Yeah. So that is one, one major advantage of it is that it is pre-engineered at the factory. Yes. So when they come to site, they only assemble to different uh, specifications and, uh, and uh, dimensions. Uh -huh. Yeah. Once you've assembled uh, the trusses, yes. they have, uh, I was here during the day and I saw that they were assembling the trusses here on site. Yes. So how will they get now to the top of the roof? Now, uh, after assembling, yeah. now they are going to be mounted yeah. on top of the roof. Yeah. Whereby now they will be uh, lifted by ropes. Yes. And then now they are mounted at the wall plates yeah. of the house. Um, Our wall plate here, yeah. uh, as you can see this uh, house, because of the span, yeah. we decided to do some 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 parts they have beams, the yes. concrete beams. Yeah. Some parts they don't have. Yeah. Uh, we depending on the uh, the sea channels. Yeah. As the at Zadinto. Okay. I think uh, we covered that last time. Yeah. Uh, one of the videos. So they are going to be mounted there. Yeah. And then uh, now after mounting, yeah. that's when now they are going to we are going to put the palings. Palings uh -huh. now this the uh, the tumors that normally carries the the mabati. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so uh, what material did the client choose for the roofing, for the roofing tile now? For the roofing tile, yeah. the roof covers. Yes, the roof covers. Uh, the uh, iron sheet, uh -huh. uh, the versatile, the versatile. gauge 28. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So this, this trusses, as you can see here, yeah. it has a capability of uh, maybe bearing a, any load of the roof of cover. The roof. So Be even... It, uh, uh, the heaviest uh, roof tile, like the clay roof tile. Yeah, can... it still it can still cover. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bearing in mind also, yeah, the same trusses. Yes. They're able to carry a uh, water tank. You know the the is still uh, water tank they are put inside the house. Yes. Yes. It can still carry, ah. so it has that capacity to carry. Okay. It has yes. that strength. Yeah, it has that strength to carry. Ah. Yeah. So advantages of uh, steel, of uh, timber, yeah. is that uh, you see how you, the timber, oh, after you buy the timber, you have to treat them. Yes. Yeah, because you are treating against now, uh, you know, the destruction of like, termites and, uh, yeah. you know. And those but, uh, beetles. Like yes. Yeah. Uh, which is very common, yes. especially, you know, in these areas where there is uh, red soil. But uh, in, in bad gauge, you know, you don't, you don't, uh, need to treat. you don't treat it yes. because you can't treat <laughs> still. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's covered. Uh, it cannot, uh, it's, it cannot rust. Uh, because of the yeah, zinc. Because now. of the zinc. Uh -huh. And also, uh, some other advantages is that, uh, it cannot cripple. You know, uh -huh. you know, sometimes you buy timber yeah. and, uh, by the time you are going to place it, it has already developed some, some shape. More, yeah. Some yeah, warps. Which, yeah. yeah. Which also distorts the, you know, the placement of the iron sheet. Yes. So you find that uh, sometimes the roof is not even, not uh -huh. because the workmanship is not good. Yes. But sometimes because the the timbers they, they they've been exposed to that direct uh, you know change yeah. of weather or something. Yeah. And then now they started uh, crippling. Okay. Yeah. And so would you say this one they are not afraid. They they they, they have that capability. Okay. Yeah. Of not crippling and uh, you know. Okay. Yes. Would you say uh, installing LGS trusses is faster than timber trusses. Yeah, I would say so because yeah. uh, one, yeah. uh, you're not cutting anything. Yes. Yeah. 
you only need a drill and a screws to 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 screw the those parts yeah to combine Just those to parts the, to, yeah to form the, the, the truss mm-hmm. so like this uh we've done it this is the third day yes and uh it's only that uh, we have we had many more technician to do that yes yeah because of you know because uh, we we still did, we were not in a hurry yeah because uh, we had not also uh, finished, uh, finished some, work uh, some work there mm-hmm. So we were doing with just three technicians. Yes. And uh, you can see the amount yeah. of work that yeah. has We've been done. We've done some several trusses. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's very easy yeah. to install or rather to uh, to put the trusses together. Okay. Yeah. So now let's talk about cost. Yes. For someone who is really who is at the stage of roofing their yes. house. Yes. And, and now they're thinking about LGS versus timber. Yes. Uh, which is which is beneficial to them financially yes uh, in, co- in terms of cost per meter per, per square meter okay i can say in terms of cost yes one uh, roofing is normally determined by the by the design yeah yeah because you can have a different design which can fit the timber you know the the, the input of timber yes you can have different design yeah. that are uh, you can weigh options yes. and see which is more affordable than the, the other. other. In this uh, project, yes. uh, we looked at the design first. Yeah. We looked at the availability of uh, roofing material, yeah. that is timber and uh, light gauge. Yeah. And we did a comparison. And uh, we came to realize that uh, light gauge steel, it's more affordable than timber. Yes. As per now, uh, timber has really, uh, has, uh-huh. the price of timber has really gone up. Okay. Maybe because of one one thing or the other, uh, unavailability of, of, of trees, you yes. know, and uh, so also co- uh, restriction yeah. by also government yes. that uh, we need to preserve, you know, uh, natural, uh, you know, the uh, natural uh, uh, part of, uh, of of the country. Yeah. So I think uh, because of that, timber has uh, it, it's very expensive. Okay. The price of timber is a, a, a little bit expensive. Oh. So we chose, the client uh, decided to go with light gauge steel, mainly because of the cost. Mainly because of the cost. Yeah. Okay. Mainly because of the cost. Yeah. And also maybe you can ask of the availability. Mostly availability of things yes. are done, or maybe they become successful yeah. because of the prior arrangements, yeah. or rather prior engagement. So when we decided of the light gauge steel, yeah. we decided way back, even before we started installing the, 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 the roof. Yeah. So we did that arrangement, we paid some deposit, yeah. and that's why we have gotten them on time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think availability of it, yeah. it's already available. Yeah. You can't get it instantly. Yeah, you have but, to give uh, maybe some time. After some, they maybe design two, the three days. You. Yeah. Because they have mm-hmm. to design, and also now they have to go to the factory now, cut the trusses okay, okay. according to the specifications. Yeah. Yes. Ah. So, mm. um, <coughs> Do you recommend LGS to someone who has never, maybe this is their first time seeing this material? Yes. Would you recommend them to build their, their roof for using LGS? I think uh, any time yeah. I would recommend uh, light gate steel. The okay. same way I've always recommended these other technologies that we are adapting. Yeah. Because like... we, can't, we can't advocate for something mm-hmm. that uh, is more expensive or rather it's more way above uh-huh. uh, the normal you know yeah. the, the normal convectional way yeah. so i think one of the thing one of the things that makes us even advocate more on those technologies one it is because of the availability and also time uh-huh. time for installation and time for you know fixing the roof yeah it's a little bit uh, short than compared to maybe if Isn't we had uh, chosen to do with timber okay yes ah something else huh? Because of their lightweight nature, yes. does it affect now the foundation design? No, that, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, yes, you know, a bungalow, mm-hmm. uh, the bungalow, the weight of the bungalow, yeah. it also affects the foundation uh, nature of it. Yes. But uh, looking at the foundation, or rather when you're building, yeah. uh, you may not... Uh, consider the weight of the foundation, the, yeah. the, the, the roof first, so that we can omit some of the things that need to be done. Or yeah. maybe 
you know you cannot co uh, compromise the foundation because, because you have changed the the, okay. the 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 type of roofing that you are going to have yes. rather when you do a foundation according to the you know the f specification and uh, all the conditions that are, are, are designed yes you are more likely uh you are more likely to what, le, okay let me put it this way the weight of the roof yeah. because it is light gauge it is a little bit uh light yeah so it cannot affect uh the uh, the, the nature of foundation yeah in the future you know in the future run okay yeah okay i okay. think uh, that's also very very important yeah, yeah yeah because now you have reduced the weight of the roof yeah so basically it cannot affect the the foundation the, the nature of the foundation uh, yes okay uh, suppose someone wants to design an attic space yes uh, does lgs accommodate for that very much okay because you can carve it because uh, it can be cut into different sizes yeah and it can also be cut into different shapes uh -huh. I think uh, that one is okay. That one is okay. Yeah, it's okay with it. You can oh. do a circular, you know, circular pa uh, design. Yeah. Yeah. So it's flexible in terms it's of design. It's very flexible, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can cut it. You yeah. can, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chomba, yes. what is the durability of LGS uh, when you compare it to timber? Okay, uh, durability, rather yeah. the lifespan of light gauge steel, yeah. since it is steel, uh, you are guaranteed that uh, it's going to last for a very long time. Yeah. Since you know it is not uh, affected by termites and uh, you know fungus. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's not affected. Sometimes you can have the leakage on the on the roof. Yeah. And uh, you, know, you see now when water it's gets into the air seeps into the into the uh, timber. Yeah. Some at some times the timber becomes very weak. It starts yeah. to rot. Yes. Yeah. But uh, the steel, this steel, because of the zinc, even yeah. if there was a bit of uh, leakage, it is not affected by water. So it won't, uh, yeah. it's anti-rust. Uh, anti yeah, it, yeah. yeah it, it doesn't rust. Okay. And also just to cover one on, uh, on, the, on the weight, as, yeah. as they say, or rather as the term described, it's light, light, light. It ensures that the the weight of the roof is reduced, yeah. and that's its assurance that uh, the way you did a foundation, because of the light weight in it, yeah. it cannot affect the the foundation. Okay. Yeah, in terms of maybe uh, you know an an an, an uh, something that maybe was not done right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it uh, it provides that. Uh -huh. Yes. So. Today is the 19th of April and we are back at the Ngong site uh, where this is a four bedroom bungalow that is being built using precast concrete panels. The last time I was here we were talking about light gauge steel. I think you can see it in, in, uh, in some parts that, are, that haven't been roofed. It's the, it's the truss structure that is supporting this roofing tile. So I wanted to show you uh, what the client chose to roof his tile, uh, sorry to roof his house and that's this piece right here this is corrugated iron sheets specifically versatile which i think is from mrm mabati rolling mills it is gauge 28 that means when it comes to iron sheets there are several gauges you can choose from the cheapest one is gauge 30. this one is gauge 28 when you compare this to gauge 30 this one is more sturdier than gauge 30. Gauge that is, is a little bit thin, it's thinner than this. So that means it's, more, it's not stronger, it's not sturdier than gauge 28. It also means that gauge 28 is more expensive per square meter than gauge 30. Uh, there's also gauge 26, but that is mostly used with stone-coated roofing tiles. Uh, to appreciate the, the design of the roof, there's this bigger piece here. You can see there are interesting grooves. Uh, there's an interesting design to this. As I've said, this is versatile. So you choose this design based on, the, based on your taste, based on how you want your house to look like. And roofing is, is part of finishing of the house. So this is what uh, will give your roofing appearance. So it's very important to pay attention to the design that you will choose because 
it's the one that gives the first impression of the house. It's, it's just there in your eyes. So that's where we are today at 19th. We are still uh, roofing the house. It's not yet done. But from this angle, you can appreciate how the house looks like in terms of roofing. It's, it's beautiful, it's elegant. I like the black color because it will match with uh, the bitumen finish that the client has chosen for the foundation, which we'll talk about next. So I'm standing next to the main house. And just beside me is the window cavity of one of the windows in the main living room. As you can see, this window is massive, which in the end will bring in lots of uh, natural light into the house. Right be beneath it is a precast panel that has been cut to fit the window size. And for the purposes of this uh, section, I wanted to talk about the foundation. So as you can see, there's, some, there's something black that has been uh, put on top on, of the foundation. And this is bitumen. So it will do two things for this house. One, it will act as the finishing for the house. So the client chose uh, to bitumen this black color specifically, I think he wants it to match with the roofing tile color because that is black and this is black and whatever he will do here will create some sort of contrast. So I'm not really sure the reason, but that's my, my thinking. Secondly, what bitumen does for the foundation is, is that it prevents dampness uh, from seeping in to the foundation. So when it rains, or when it's damp uh, from the outside, this oily layer will prevent water from seeping into the foundation, thereby causing any other future damages of the foundation. So, it, so this is something you can do to your house. You can paint bitumen if you want something black, uh, if you want a black finish for your, for your foundation. This is something you can do. So I wanted to point it out here. We can also do a, an interesting contrast uh, where one section is not painted. Uh, if you can come to this side, you can see uh, not much work has been done here at the foundation. So it will be plastered and then the bitumen will be painted on top. I think two coats so that it can have a smooth finish for the foundation. Uh, I think we had a conversation a while back with the main contractor, Mr. Chomba, where he talked about uh, the slopiness of this plot. It generally slopes this way. So that's why you will see there's some, you'll see that the foundation here is not, is, is thinner than here. As you can see here, the foundation height is almost my height. And that's because the, the client wanted a level floor of his house, didn't want a sloping floor for his house that slopes with the, with the land. So to achieve that, more courses had to be done here to achieve a level surface than when, it, when you compare it to there. So that's why this part is almost my height. Now I'm standing at the living room of this house and just behind me are these two gentlemen hard at work doing the plastering of the beam the ring beam that is uh, going all around the living room. So as you can see, he's applying some plaster, some plaster finish to the, to the beams so that in the end, uh, paintworks can commence. Uh, something else I wanted to show you. As you can see up here, you can appreciate the light gauge steel with the corrugated iron sheets on top of it. I think this is one of the better finishes uh, you, that you can have for your, for your ceiling in case you don't have the money to do any ceiling work or if you, if you prefer this industrial look to your home. So you can appreciate uh, the height of, uh, of the apex of the roof. It's way over there and the trusses that are supporting it, they have this interesting crisscross pattern to it that is just interesting to the eye. So overall, it makes uh, this living space to appear much bigger. We are still at the living room 
And something interesting that I wanted to point out are these three rectangular hollow sections that are standing from the foundation all the way to the beam. And here, between uh, the spaces of these RHS sections, there are going to be two windows that will be installed. Uh, that is a floor to ceiling window. And uh, the spacing of these RHS sections is one meter and another one meter. So it will be interesting to see uh, the windows uh, for, this, uh, for this house, for this living room. And that will come in a future video. So guys, right now they're installing a window in one of the rooms of this house. And as you can see how massive this window is. And this is just for, I think this is a bedroom. And you can see how big uh, the window is. I think the client wanted lots and lots of natural light into all of his rooms. And you can just appreciate uh, the size of this window. So, so these two gentlemen are hard at work installing this window. And this is what they are doing. Because it's gauge 16, the windows are a bit heavy, so that's why you can see it needs three gentlemen to support the installation of the window. Yeah. So today is the 27th of April, and I'm back at the Ngong house. This project is moving at a steady speed, and I wanted to give you an update of this week's construction progress. So as you can see behind me, this gentleman is trying to cover up the, the pipe work of the sewage system of this house. So they are doing the, the manholes uh, for every bathroom in this house. So where I'm standing at right now is, is one of the manholes that is uh, dug around this house. And this will uh, be able to manage the, the wastewater flow for this house. And they usually placed uh, several at, at, at strategic locations of the house, mostly after the kitchen and uh, the bathroom sewage systems. And they're all going to lead to the biodigester. Uh, the biodigester will be installed at the last manhole for the house. So guys, I just wanted to point out that the construction works are, that are ongoing are pretty noisy. So you'll hear a lot of background noise so I hope you don't mind that. Uh, but for now, I want to talk about this uh, manhole that is being constructed. As you can see, they've only done the skeleton, just placing the blocks, and then they'll do the plastering and smoothening out so that it becomes a functional manhole. Also, I want to talk about this yellow stone that I've seen that is prevalent in Gong area. I've seen a lot of houses that have used this stone for, for the architectural design. And it's a bright orange, yellow, or gold color, whichever color works for you, it's that. And uh, with this color, you can achieve a, gold, a golden look for your house. So it can be molded, you can, do, you can sand it down, or you can do some interesting uh, moldings on top of this stone to create uh, a finish for your house. I think this stone, if you decide to use it, it can save you on paintworks. Or if you if you're the kind of person who's looking for the for that classic stone wall finish, this can be an interesting stone to use for your house. Right now, I'm crouching on one of the last major manholes of this house, and this manhole, as you can see, all these pipes they come from the, the toilet system for all the toilets inside the house. So whenever the toilet is flushed, all the waste water, specifically the black water will all flow to this major manhole. I call this the last main manhole because this, this one is now connected directly to the biodigester which is, and which is over there, there down the slope of this, uh, of this plot. So everything will flow by gravity because the land is sloping that way so there won't be any problems uh, with the flow of waste water. So as you can see, all these pipes, they're all coming inside here. And then there'll be a major pipe that will take all this wastewater to the biodigester. And let's head there now. Now the 
biodigester for this house. And if I'm eyeballing it, I think this is two, two meters or two and a half meters. This is one and a half meters and the depth is one meter. So all the toilet black water will flow directly into the biodigester. And this pipe is the inlet pipe. And if you come with me, the outlet will be connected here and straight into the sock pit. Um, we'll go there in just a while. But for now, let's talk about this biodigester. The design is similar to a septic tank. So that's why I usually like to call this design a bioseptic tank, but uh, it will work under the principle of a biodigester. So the anaerobic bacteria will be introduced here and the process of digestion will take place. So right now I'm standing next to the soak pit and it's quite deep. It's a circular hole. I think this is like two, two and a half meters down. Eventually this will be filled up with hardcore stones and this will now do the secondary treatment of any effluent that flows from the biodigester into the soak pit. So it will treat uh, the waste further so that once it percolates down the soil, uh, the, the, the risk of contamination is reduced. Also, all the grey water, not from the showers, from the kitchen, they will all be directed to the soak pit. They won't pass through the bi biodigester. So this grey pipe that you see here will direct all the grey water. And this one, this is from the biodigester. And it will direct the toilet gray black water into the soak pit. Both the biodigester and the soak pit work hand in hand to treat the wastewater that will flow from this house. Uh, this bioseptic tank is still under construction and eventually it will be, everything here will be covered, even the soak pit over there. Only the monitoring chambers will be left exposed on the ground so that in case in future you need to check on the biodigester, that can happen. But I just wanted to point out that this is still under construction. They, they haven't done the smoothening of the biodigester on the inside walls because that's very important. Yeah, you don't want uh, the wastewater to stagnate or to stick on the sides of the, of the bioseptic tank. Uh, the backfilling will take place and this system is designed to work underground with minimal interruptions, with minimal uh, supervision. And that's the beauty of a bioseptic tank system. I remember in the last week that I was here, I was talking about uh, the foundation being unplastered. Uh, it's interesting that in another week, you can see what they've done here. This is now, this will act now like the main staircase and to the main entrance of the house. So this is uh, the first platform, then the steps, and then this will now be the main door the house and on this other side uh, you you'll find that there is there's a ramp that has been designed uh, for those who don't want to use the steps or for those and for those people who are physically challenged they can be able to use this ramp uh, to get inside the house this has been done in a week's time and that is pretty fast if you ask me right now we are standing inside the living room last week when I was here, there wasn't this feature behind me. And, and this new week, this is something new that has been added inside this living room. So I wanted uh, Mr. Chomba, the main contractor, to explain to us what this is. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nick, for visiting us once again. Uh, this is a chimney. Yeah. Yeah. You realize where we are, it's uh -huh. a little bit cold. Cold, yeah. Yeah. It's um, gone. The Ngong Hills. Yeah. Yes. So we need to keep the house warm. That's why now we introduce uh, this chimney. Okay. Actually, it's just a traditional chimney. Yeah. But now we are going to put it in such a way. Yeah. The aesthetic uh, look of, of it doesn't look like a chimney. Okay. Actually, it's going to look like a feature. Oh. Because on oh. top of it, uh -huh. that's where we are going to hang the, the TV. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So okay. it's okay. sort of a feature. Oh, so there won't be any, like they won't burn any wood here? No, we are going to burn wood. Here. Oh, yeah. okay. But, but better still, we still have the, 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 the TV. Ah, set mounted, on top. mounted on top. But there'll of be it. that vent that yes, will go yes. outside. So it's coming up. So mm -hmm. it's going up. 
Yeah. But now the look, the the you know the traditional look of the chimney. Yeah. It's not going to be like that. Ah. So yeah. I will, we'll wait to see. Yeah. Yes. And become. I can share the render. Yes. You see first the render, and then now you come and see it. Okay. Uh, when uh, we're done with it. Ah. Yes. So so. Uh, this is the study room, and there's something interesting that has been done on top of the precast panels. So maybe you can explain to us what this is. The, yeah. it, it looks like it's being done on the joints of the yes. precast panels. Uh, you realize yeah. these are the joints, uh, the interlock joints for, yes. for the panels. Yeah. Because uh, it has a span of about two feet. Yeah. The width of it is two feet. Uh -huh. So what happens to the joint? Uh, we normally put uh, the fiber fiber tape okay. on, on on that joint, mm -hmm. and then we skim it separately from yeah. the other skimming. Okay, and uh, you uh, give it time for it to dry. The reason as to why we do this yeah. is to avoid the cracks. Okay, you know, you know, on a concrete uh, aspect. Yeah, whenever there is a joint, even if you put a plaster on it, yeah, it will still develop uh, some, uh, some joint. Cracks. That some cracks, yeah. You know, earth always moves, yeah. And uh, just a little bit of you know seismic uh, movement and everything distorts the the connection of the. Of so the this joints. prevents that. Yeah. So this prevents basically this prevents the 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 cracks to or to to, to appear. To be, yeah, to appear on the on the finished yes. uh, wall. Yeah. So, yeah. So you need to put this net. It is very important. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's please. now this is done on every. On every, joint. Joint of the... on every joint, yeah. you need to do this. Okay. If you realize there are some, we have done the the, the plastering. Yeah. But still, better still, we are going to, to put the net. Okay. Yeah. So we have to do it prior to the overall uh, skimming. Okay. Yes. Inside the master bedroom, and the skimming works are ongoing. So this gentleman on my right is doing the skimming on the on the walls, and. Mr. Chomba, how many coats of skimming will be done for the world? Uh, we expect to, to do two coats. Remember, you are using precast panel. Which yes, is yes. almost ninety percent uh, finished. Yeah. So it is not that rough. Okay. Uh, yeah. So a maximum of two coats, we are going to be ready. Okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. what uh, we have decided? Yeah. We have decided to focus on this master area because uh -huh. you have the master bedroom, uh -huh. the closet. And the, uh, we can, and the we can walk. Yeah, we can walk. Yeah, we can walk. So there is a. This is the master bedroom. Uh -huh. This is the closet. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this is the toilet. Or so the master bathroom. Yeah, the master, master bathroom, closet. Toilet, the master bedroom. Yeah. So what we uh -huh. decided, we decided yeah. to work on this because uh -huh. the clients are coming on Saturday. So at least. Yeah. We are going to finish this by Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You might see uh, that uh, you may think we are too far from uh, from finishing, finishing. but uh, yet uh, we are going to finish. Like the gypsum, this one we are going to finish tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the, the gypsum. The gypsum, yes. Okay, so this is, how do you mount it on top of now the the, the LGS? Okay, now uh, I think I will move to some some other rooms. Yes. Uh, you are going to see where, how we have done the bladdering. Yeah. Using the the channel, the C channel uh -huh. and the stands. Okay. Because for the gypsums, you yeah. need the C channels and the stand. Yeah. The advantage of the light gauge is that uh, the trusses are too close to to each, each other. other. Yeah. So it gives that strength for mounting the channels yeah. and the stands on it. Okay. Yes. But I think uh, we will move yeah. to other houses. So okay. uh, right on this, yeah. uh, we are going to do uh, tiles tomorrow. Yeah. As we finish up on on, uh, on the gypsum. On the gypsum. Okay. Yeah, because we need to do tiles, and also we need to do the wardrobes on this this okay. area. Yeah. Okay. So we are planning to finish by Saturday, at least this portion. Okay. This so that they can this portion be able, of the master. Yeah, this portion of the master. Yeah. So that now we, they can be able to to relate and see yeah. the the finishing that are. Uh, are expected. Okay. Yes. You were mentioning something about the blundering. Yes. And the gypsum. Yes. So maybe you can take us through. Right? Yeah. Now, if you look at uh, these steels, they are different types. Yeah. They are one for the for the roofing. Uh -huh. That is the light gauge steel, the one that you came in. So. Yes. And uh, there is uh, the other ones. They are both aluminiums. Oh. Even, the, even the ones that we are using for skimming, uh -huh. they are aluminiums. So we have the channels and the stands. Uh -huh. Now you see the the span that you put yeah. is uh, two feet each. 
Uh -huh. Because now we have a, uh, the gypsum board is normally four feet, four feet, four by eight. Yeah. So on this portion, uh -huh. this covers the whole of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because it is four feet. Four feet. So the, the 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 dimension between one channel to the that channel is four feet. It's four feet. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's going to be placed so on. So it it lies flush on yes, top of it this. Yes. Lies flush on those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bearing in mind that uh, we have one level from this corner yeah. to the other corner. Okay. Yeah. So we have attached it, uh, as you can see, then uh, the other ones. We have attached it to the to the trusses yeah. to avoid the ceiling from sagging. Okay. Yeah. So it is firmly held from the walls and also from the from the roof. Okay. Yes. Also, the electrical works are ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen yeah. the electricians, they were busy at work. Yes, doing uh, yeah, no, the electrical. That, now, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. If uh, you can come a little bit closer, yeah. you will uh, notice there's a pipe. Yeah, so this pipe we installed this pipe uh -huh. when we were doing the, the when we were installing the panels, yeah. especially when we were casting this, this uh, beam. Yeah, so that's the time that we installed that pipe. Uh -huh. The reason being now. Uh, it protrudes outside the beam. Yeah. So when uh, the electrician comes, yeah. he has just cut the po the portion where this fit. box will fit. Yeah. So we just fix here, cut the pipe, and then, then do the wiring. The wiring so the wiring is very simple for them. Be yeah. Yeah. For them, it's very very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you don't need to hack the whole wall. Yeah. Because what you need those are the sections yes. in the panel. What you need to cut is here now the box, the switch box, and the you know the. The, the other boxes that okay. are going to fix. Okay. Yeah. Both happens to the uh, the, uh, to the plumbing. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, look at one of the toilets here. Okay. So we are now in one of the bathrooms. Yes. Of this house. Yeah. And there's a lot of pipe work <laughs> that is being done. So explain to us all this. Yeah. Now this is the piping of the water. Yes. We've already completed the piping, and uh, mind you, we've done the, the pressure test. Uh -huh. The pressure test is whereby you do all the piping, you lock uh, all the outlets, uh -huh. and then now you open uh, the water from the main valve yeah, to yeah. ensure the, the, uh, the advantage of doing the pressure test yes. uh, is to ensure that, uh, or maybe to check if there is leakage. Yeah. One. Yeah. Secondly, is to ensure that uh, you have used the right pipe. Uh -huh. Because there are some other pipe that we use, uh, that can be used, yeah. that cannot sustain the pressure. So what they do, they bust. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it is very, very important for a plumber. Yeah. And not all the plumbers, no yeah. qualified yeah. plumber, because yeah. they want to do a good job. It's very important for them to do the pressure, uh, pressure, the pressure test. test. So we've done the pressure test. You've seen our, our piping, how yeah. we, we do it. Initially, if it was uh, the convection way, yeah. they could have hacked the wall all the way. Uh, from bottom to top yeah. but you see now we have just hacked or maybe cut where we want the we want to connect with the with the, with the rest of the you know the, uh, the outfit of it yeah yeah so that is another advantage of, uh, of panels okay so all both mechanical electrical ah, and plumbing, yeah, yeah. you do them on hollows yeah yeah, yeah yeah you've seen the other ones that have come from top it's yeah, actually you only very cut, evident. You, only just you, cut, yeah. you just see the, yeah. the pipe work going, passing yeah. through the hollow sections, yes. going all the way mm. to the bottom. And yeah. you can see how neat yeah, it is. It's very neat. It's very, <laughs> yeah, that's, yes. that's an advantage of the cast panel. Yes. Welcome, guys, to another update. Today is the 10th of May, and I'm back here at the Ngong house. So, in that time, since the last time I was here, most of the works that are ongoing are internal. So they're doing the finishing. And as you can see behind me, uh, Mr. Josphat, Elias, and the rest of the team, they're doing the tiling. So the size of the tile is 39 centimeters by 39 centimeters, ceramic tile, and it's white in color. I think this is what the client will use for, for the dining, for the living room and also for the kitchen. But uh, we'll wait to see as they're ongoing with the finishing. Also, since I was here uh, uh, last time, uh, we were talking up with uh, Mr. Chomba about this chimney. Uh, since then, as you can see, it has been done. Uh, it's only a matter of finishing. 
but structurally the, the chimney is done. And here the, so the sockets and the electrical wires have been placed uh, to, for, for the purposes of a TV. So if you can head with me, let's head into the kitchen where some more work are ongoing. <laughs> We are now in the kitchen, and as you can see behind me, they've already done the cabinetry for this kitchen space. So the choice uh, of the cabinets is MDF. It's white in color. Since the last time I was here, this wasn't there. So I wanted to give you an update before they do, uh, before they finish the kitchen. So as you can see also to my left, uh, more cabinets. Uh, both uh, on the wall and below. Uh, I think this space will be for the six burner cooker. And I think here they'll do the sink. And this will be the window facing towards the laundry space. And so if you can head with me, uh, so here you can see the carpentry team that they are doing the, the works here. The, they're cutting the MDF boards uh, for the for the kitchen and I think also for the doors and all the other works. And so who is so even Mr. Kim who is coming into the view is doing his work over here. And th this is the laundry space, but for now they've used it as a space for cutting the MDF. Right now I'm standing in the kitchen's pantry space, and as you can see, you can appreciate the size of this room. The client preferred to have spacious rooms, even for the pantry. It's a walk-in pantry, extending from here all the way to here. And if I extend my hands, you can see the size in the video. So this is a big space for, the, for a big kitchen, for a big house. In the last update that I was here, I remember we were, I was talking about the installation of this window. And since that time, you can see that they've already done that. They've done the skimming on the walls. They've tiled the floor. And for the gypsum ceiling, they've already put the gypsum. And all that's left to do is painting it on top. So you can appreciate uh, the speed of this project in those in that in that short time you can see how fast things have moved an important feature of this house that i've noticed is the huge window spaces that the clients wanted for their home so you can if i stand here you can appreciate the height of this window and also if i extend my arms outwards you can you can still see the size of the window. Uh, it, it brings in a lot of natural light. Uh, and since uh, the, skim, the skim coat is white, the tiles are white, and also the gypsum has a whitish uh, color to it, you can see how bright this room is. So I can't wait to uh, come when the house is done, when the rooms are done, when the finishing is over, so that we do a tour with the homeowner as they take us around their home. Okay guys, we are now outside the house and I wanted us to talk about the design feature that the homeowners want for their home. So, as you can see behind me, we'll start from the bottom going up. Uh, since the last updates, this is still the foundation that has been plastered and a, bitumen, a bituminous uh, coat of oil has been uh, painted on top, which is black in color. Now here, this is a design feature for the house and it's a brick design. And then on top of it, a wall master, a gray wall master has been painted on top of it to create this kind of finish. So if you come here, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're able to see this, uh, this, this face of the wall, uh, the brickwork design has been done, but here not yet. So 
the designer will come and do the, will come and score the walls according to the size of the bricks so to create that seamless finish for the entire house so this is a gray uh, wall master finish uh, for for this section of the wall now above above this section has been painted has been painted a white wall master paint so this will be done uniformly throughout the house but they've started on this side of the house so we'll wait to see once they're done with the paintworks and see the finished house in the end we are at the back of the house and this is still the same biodigester that i talked about in the previous update so they are still doing the construction of it now they've put the formwork uh, to create the internal wall uh, for this whole biodigester and also for the baffles so this is what is uh, currently ongoing now uh, if you come with me they've dug a trench that leads to the soak pit so i'm guessing this is where the outlet pipe that is connected from the from the biodigester this outlet pipe will take uh, all the wastewater that has been treated inside the biodigester and into the deep soak pit that is right over there so let's head to that soak pit now i'm crouching beside the soak pit and since the since the last time i was here i think they've dug it a little bit deeper it wasn't as deep uh, as it was in the last update so this entire soak pit will be filled to the brim with hardcore stones and the function of the soak pit is to act as a secondary wastewater treatment system so the primary system is the biodigester uh, once it does what it does any waste that will flow inside here from the outlet pipe will undergo secondary treatment this is done to ensure that uh, the waste doesn't uh, contaminate any groundwater beneath uh, the soak pit and it also ensures that all the gray water that's uh, the water that comes from the kitchen wastewater the showers uh, the taps from the sinks all that wastewater will be directed here and only the toilet black water will be directed into the, into the biodigester uh, as you can see in this clip, uh, this is rainwater, this is not groundwater. Uh, it, it rained in the morning, uh, on this day before, before uh, I arrived here. This, still, this works are still ongoing, uh, they haven't done much. I think they are mo mostly focused on finishing the, the house and then they come here and finish this. Like I said before, this will be buried and you won't even know that there was a soft pit here. Uh, only the inspection chambers of the biodigester will, will be left exposed so that uh, in case in future you need to do uh, you need to do some inspection you need to if there are any blockages there are any issues that can be rectified that's it for now thanks for watching <laughs>